Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we're working on this piece that's behind me and this is actually a look you've seen me do before, but the customer loved that piece except the dimensions didn't work for her space. So she had this existing piece of furniture that the dimensions work perfectly and we can totally transform that look and put it onto the same piece. So I think it's really cool to show you guys what the same looks might look like on different pieces of furniture and how I might adjust techniques and stuff to fit a particular piece. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So these colors might look a little familiar and they are the whole finishes, but we're going to do it in a totally new way because it's a different piece of furniture. So these are some colors that I absolutely love using this accent color in the middle, which is why is all Spanish olive. It's one of those colors I would have never picked but it's ended up being like one of my favorite accent colors and it almost makes a piece look like it's glowing so this just has a first coat on it right now it's looking a little rough but trust me it's going to get there really pretty piece of furniture that I'm going to make over it's also cool for you guys to see what looks customers are being attracted to that they want me to duplicate over and over again because that can be a, a clue on some trends and design um, designs that are popular with people right now. And that's exactly what this one is. So let's go ahead and get started on this makeover. Here is the piece that inspired it all. My customer loved this piece of furniture, but it was just too wide for the wall that she wanted it to go on. So we're gonna take the finishes on this piece of furniture and transform this to the one she gave me. This is the transfer we plan on using and I'm pulling my color inspiration from there. Here is the piece of furniture in her existing home. So you can see that wall space that she's got. It is a limited space, but this is a great blank canvas and I think this look is going to work perfectly on this piece. I started out by giving this one a thorough cleaning to remove any old polishes or finger grease that might be on the piece and then removing the hardware. Now I'm going to give it a scuff sanding using my surf prep sander. Using my surf prep, it's really easy to do this, uh, this scuff sanding. That's one of the reasons I love the three by four electric ray because it can be um, tough when I need it to be powerful for stripping, but also gentle enough to just do a scuff sanding. With all my prep work done on this, I'm going to go ahead and spray on two coats of Wysol primer in light gray. This primer sprays remarkably well, and it's one of my favorite products of theirs. It's a stain blocking primer and a gripping primer in one. So I'm primarily using it on this piece to help me with the grip because I'm painting over an existing shiny finish. This piece was actually part of a project that I worked on for myself. I pulled out a whole bunch of pieces from my storage all at one time. I prepped them all together and I sprayed them all in primer all together. This was a really big project, but it ended up saving me a lot of time. Here is the piece after two coats of primer. It's a beautiful blank slate. Once my primer is nice and dry, it's time for me to start my paint finish on this piece. And I'm using three colors. These are all from Wysel Paint. The dark gray that I'm going to use is called Carbon, that I'm going to use a deep green called Foxtrot, and then of course that little glow of Spanish Olive in the center. When I'm blending paint, I tend to choose three color finishes, and that's because I look at it that my middle color is my main color and then I add a highlight which is a little bit lighter version and a low light which is a darker version and that's exactly what I'm doing here. I start out by applying my darker color around the outer edges of this furniture piece and then I'm going to come back and apply some of that foxtrot just in the center of it. I'm using my uh, Klingon S50 brush. This is my favorite brush for laying paint on. It holds just the right amount of paint. These brushes clean remarkably well. I really like using these. They can be used for blending also, although I am going to use a slightly larger brush for blending on this one. This is my first coat of paint and so I'm working on just getting the paint laid on. This is where I'm going to work on just getting my coverage, getting my color layout worked out, where I want to place the colors. I don't worry about my blends being perfect on this coat because I'm going to finish that up on my second coat and really perfect them. Now in the center, I'm going to lay on that Spanish olive. You can see how this color is a little bright and might be a little frightening at first, but when combined with the Foxtrot, it's an absolutely beautiful combination. These are gradations of the same color, meaning this is, this is a monochromatic paint finish. I've got various shades of green that all tie in together and pull in some similar colors. These greens all have some yellow undertones, and that's because the greens that are in my transfer all lean a little bit yellow. Let's go ahead and pan up to the top and I'm going to repeat the same process of laying my first blended coat on to the top of this piece. Again, my steps are going to be to lay that carbon around the outside edges, then a little bit of foxtrot in the middle, and then that highlight of Spanish olive. This is also a great angle to see that I do paint inside the body to match the colors and their layout on the furniture piece as well. So you can see where I've removed that drawer and I painted that inside lip with a blend that matches on the furniture piece on the front of it. 
This just gives the piece an extra finished look and it means whether that drawer is pushed in or pulled out, you're never going to see any wood and the colors underneath are always going to match what's on the front of the piece. I don't always show this step on camera, but I always blend around the edges of my body as well so they always match. I really think these finish touches are super important and add an extra notch of quality to your finishes. And that wraps up my first coat of paint around the entire body. I got all of the sides done with a single coat and I'm going to let this dry for 24 hours before I come back to work on my second coat of paint. Before I start my second coat, I'm going to give the body a light sanding with a 220 grit um, sanding sponge. And this is just going to take down any grit in my paint, any dust that might have fallen in. This just adds an extra finished feeling to the final coat of paint. It's a small step that just takes a few seconds, but it really adds a little bit of quality to your finishes. It might feel like you're watching this step on repeat and that's because you are. The second coat is basically a repeat of my first coat, only this time I'm going to spend a little more time perfecting my blends. For my second coat I generally use a little bit more water and that just helps my brush glide over the gritty surface of the existing paint coat underneath. I'm also using the water to thin out the paint just a little bit because this is my second coat and I got the majority of the coverage that I needed with my first coat. I really just want this to be a light coat that perfects my blends. For the most part with Wiseall paint, I can get all, all the coverage I need in two coats of paint. There may be the occasional color that requires three coats, and those are just colors that are notorious for not getting as good of coverage. But for these greens, you can see I'm getting all the coverage that I need with just that first coat underneath and then my thinned out second coat. I'm laying the paint onto the surface using my Klingon S50 brush again. I'm using nice, wide, large, smooth, even brush strokes to try to keep this second coat as smooth as possible. Once I've got all those colors laid on and I've used the mister to keep my paint wet so that I can keep it workable, I'm going to bring out my Klingon B12 brush. And this is a nice wide block brush and I'm gonna use it to run those colors right into each other. You'll notice that I'm brushing right through the colors using a little mist of water and I'm kind of using a cross hatching motion to pull those colors together. I'm doing this to blend the transitions in between the two colors so that you don't notice where one stops and the next one starts. This blending brush is a clean dry brush so it doesn't have any water in it and if it starts to pick up too much paint I just have a rag in my hand where I will lay off the brush and try to keep it as clean as possible. You can see right away how just this brush and pulling those colors into each other starts making those transitions disappear and making this look like a uniform color transformation. For this piece, I wanted to do something fun and I decided to go ahead and photograph it with just the paint finish on it. This is such a gorgeous paint finish on its own that it really stands out. And this would be a beautiful point when you could absolutely stop the finish and decide to keep it as is. At this point, I was actually waiting for my transfer to arrive in the mail, so it was a perfect time to savor those paint finishes. But even though this piece is completely gorgeous as is, I can't leave well enough alone, so I'm going to add some decorative detail. On the inside of the doors, I wanted to add this stencil detail, so I started out by stenciling in this foil adhesive from Artistic Painting Studios. This is going to just go in the spaces of my stencil, and when I pull the stencil away, it's going to reveal a stencil outline done just in adhesive. Then I'm going to let this adhesive dry for 30 to 60 minutes, and I can come back and place the foil from Artistic Painting Studios over over the top. The foil adhesive dries extremely tacky and so it's going to pull away the foil only where I place that stencil. This is a sort of soft gold color and I'm just rubbing over the top of the foil using a, a nylon nail brush. The stencil that I chose for this is the Petite Trellis stencil from Posh Chalk and I love this stencil for this technique because it's just a very nice soft and subtle outline that just gives a little bit of detail. I can use the same piece of foil over and over again because I just need a, enough foil on the backing to cover where the outline of that stencil is. When I pull that foil away, you can see how it's stuck into the foil adhesive and gives me this nice gold outline. 
My transfer finally arrived in the mail, so it's time to go ahead and start applying it. I started out by doing a dry fitting of the um, of the transfer to see whether it fit better in a vertical or a horizontal position. This is a nice transfer because it can be used either way depending on the size of your piece. I felt like on this one, a vertical position fit the piece the best. This transfer comes in three pieces that I'm going to need to seam together. I started out by marking out the first piece of my transfer to fit along the center of my doors. Using that as my center marking, I'm gonna um, apply a slit down the center using a sharp razor knife and then start rubbing my transfer and pulling away that clear backing sheet as I go. I'm doing this slowly to make sure that I don't pull away any of the fine details of my transfer as I'm pulling away that clear backing sheet, making sure the entire transfer stays on my furniture piece. You can see now looking up close on this transfer how I pulled my color inspiration in those greens from the colors on this transfer. How they have the yellowy undertones instead of greens that lean towards a blue, these colors that I chose were perfect. After this first piece of the transfer goes on, I will match up the second piece along the seam lines and apply that and then my third piece and this transfer is applied. That was the final step in this beautiful furniture finish. I went ahead and sprayed this in two coats of Wiseal matte varnish to seal that transfer in and this is the completed piece. Bonus on this one because I even got photos from my customer of this piece in her home, which I always love to see. Here's the final staged piece. I staged this one with some simple flowers that tied in with some of the white colors that are on the front um, and a gold mirror up above. I overall love how this turned out. That paint finish is absolutely stunning and I love how it just peeks out from underneath that transfer. I would be hard pressed on this one to say whether I love the original or the second version more. Which one do you guys prefer? Overall, I just know that my customer loves it as much as I do and that makes me happy. You guys can find links for everything I use in the description for this post and more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube and my website at brushbybrandy.com.